in driver's room part six. Again, we have a chain rule problem. Here's our inside function. So dy dx is equal to, derivative of the outside, don't change the inside, multiply by the derivative of the inside, we would write that as dy dx is 2e to the 2x. 21, we have a chain rule with a logarithm. Now remember, the derivative of log base a of x would be 1 over x natural log a dx. So let's remember that chain rule. We have g prime of x is equal to the derivative of the outside, so 1 over. Now, this x, remember, is really this function here. So we have 6x to the 4th plus 3 to the 5th power, natural log of the base of the log, which is 9. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of this inside function, which is a chain rule. So we will have 5 to the fourth power, 6x to the fourth plus 3, multiply by the derivative of the inside, 24x cubed. So clean that up just a little bit here, I think. Let's go ahead and start by putting the 5, the 6x to the fourth plus 3 to the fourth power, the 24x cubed all over, 6x to the 4th plus 3 to the 5th power, natural log 9. Looking at it here, we can see a cancel that we can do. We can cancel that out a little bit. We could probably multiply the 5 times the 24 also. So g prime of x would be equal to 120x cubed over 6x to the fourth plus three, natural log nine. In problem 22, again, we have another a to the x problem, chain rule. So dy dx is equal to five to the three x, natural log five, multiplied by three. In 23, we have implicit differentiation with chain rule. And we need to really be careful about this inside function because that's product rule. So the derivative of 9y to the fourth would be 36y cubed dy dx. Remember, when you take the derivative of a y term, you need to multiply by dy dx minus 10x plus now, here comes our chain rule with product rule. We have the derivative of natural log, which is 1 over something. Don't change the something. Multiply by the derivative of that something, which would be first derivative of the second plus the second derivative of the first is equal to 0. Remember, we have f, we have g, so this is f times g prime plus g times f prime. We can now try and clean this up just a little bit. Um, let's start by moving the 10x to the other side. And then I would most likely distribute this term in. So we have 36y cubed dy dx. This 10x has been moved already. Now when we distribute to the first term, we get plus x over xy dy dx plus y over xy is equal to 10x. We can see at this point that we can cross out some x's there, some y's there. We need to put a 1 as a placeholder. We can move the non-dy dx term to the other side. So let's subtract our 1 over x to the other side. We now can factor out a dy dx. So dy dx inside is 36y cubed plus 
1 over y is equal to 10x minus 1 over x. We can now divide this term to the other side. We have dy dx is equal to, we have a 10x minus 1 over x over a 36y cubed plus 1 over y. Generally speaking, we don't like complex fractions, so let's see if we can't make a common denominator and clean this up a little bit. We have denominators of x and y, so our common denominator will be xy. If I want to have an xy here, then I will need to multiply the top by xy. I already have the x. If I want an xy, I would need to multiply the top by y. Down here, I already have the y, so if I want an xy, I'll have to multiply by x. Here, if I want an xy, I'll need to multiply by an xy. The value of making a common denominator everywhere is now we can simply cancel out all those denominators. On the top, then, we have a 10x squared y minus a y. And on the bottom, we have uh, xy. No. Back that up. x. Back that up. Sorry about that. 36xy to the fourth plus x.